Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. Today we are out here in Flagstaff, Arizona with a newly released scooter, the Awesome Leopard DT1 Pro, which is essentially a refreshed design of the original Leopard, but this time with dual motors and a host of new features. Now if you followed my content for a while, you'll know that I covered the Awesome Gallop as well as the original Awesome Leopard in detail, and to this day I still think both of those scooters are some of the best performance value buy scooters on the market today. Now the question is, will the Awesome Leopard DT1 Pro hold up to that reputation? Well, we're about to find out. Now I do want to mention that Awesome did send this scooter over for review purposes, but as always, all thoughts, opinions, and conclusions are my own. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is take you in for a closer look at some of the features of this scooter, then we're going to go ahead and take it out on a first impressions ride here around the Flagstaff area. So without further delay, let's jump into the details. All right, so some quick stats about this scooter. I did weigh it before I got here. It does weigh in at 67.7 pounds, which puts it around the same weight of the original Leopard, uh, but with the seating configuration, this particular scooter does not come with a seat. Now, Awesome does claim that this version of the Leopard, the DT1 Pro, will get upwards of 41 miles an hour, as well as 47 miles in theoretical range, which of course we will be putting to the test. Now, let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the features of this scooter. So starting in the rear, we do have our tire hugger mud guards, which are installed uh, right out of the factory in the back as well as the front. We also have our 10 inch by three inch tubed pneumatic tires with split rims. And that's something I loved about the Gallop as well as the Leopard is they do com come configured with split rims, which means that tire changes are gonna be a breeze. Uh, back here, you can also see that we've got hydraulic disc brakes, which is also a upgrade over the previous Leopard because that scooter came with manual brakes. So these are zoom hydraulic disc brakes, which should absolutely improve stopping power. Now back here, I don't know if you can see it, but this does have a dual swing arm suspension. So you've got uh, your coils back here, as well as coils in the front, which I'll show you in a moment. You've also got some reflectors back here. All right, so as I mentioned previously, this is a dual motor scooter, and you've got a thousand watt motor in the rear, as well as a thousand watt motor up front. Now this is a 52 volt scooter, uh, which is an upgrade from the 48 volts that you got with the previous Leopard. Uh, we do have a functional kick plate, which is always nice, especially with scooters that have more power. This gives you a good opportunity to position your feet so that you can accelerate at a high rate of speed as well as slow down really quickly. So really nice to see a functional kick plate. Uh, this is metal with a plastic cover on it. I would just avoid putting your feet on these plastic wings here because they don't look as sturdy as this right here. Now working our way back, we do have a very spacious deck on the awesome level. Leopard, so you shouldn't have any issues at all with foot placement, but we'll definitely be putting that to the test. And this scooter also has side turn signals, both in the rear as well as the front, which I'll be showing you here in a moment. Uh, back here, we do have a latching mechanism uh, for the folding mechanism on this scooter, which we'll see here in a second. And then working our way up front, we do have dual charge ports. This scooter does come with a two amp charger and it's got an 18.2 amp hour battery. So you're looking about nine to 10 hours uh, to fully charge this scooter. Now, if you have dual chargers, which this scooter comes with one, you'd be able to charge this thing up in four to five hours. And of course, on this side of the scooter, we do have a pretty robust looking spring-loaded kickstand. So we'll definitely see how this thing holds up throughout our testing. Working our way forward, you will see the front swing arm assembly here with our uh, coil spring suspension there. Uh, we also have our reflectors here up front, as well as the front zoom hydraulic disc brakes uh, and that front tire hugger uh, fender to help keep you know some of the dirt and water off of you. If we get some rain and the opportunity to test that out, we'll see how it holds up. As we work our way up, this is the uh, latching mechanism for the folding stem. Now these are probably one of the single most critical parts of any scooter. So you definitely want these to be robust and so far it does look very robust, but we'll take a look at what that folding mechanism looks like. Now, if you're curious how this folding mechanism works, you simply push this lever It'll allow you to push this out. There's a hook down here, make sure that's undone, and then you can fold it down. Now, once you get in this folded position, you just lift up this loop, latch in the hook, and you're good to go. You can now pick the scooter up and take it to wherever you need to. 
So working our way up the stem, we do have our front headlights, so we'll definitely be putting that to the test with some night rides. But under this light, you've actually got this flap, and as you can see, you've got USB-A as well as USB-C charging ports. So if you need to uh, charge up your devices on the go, you absolutely can. Now, another little hidden feature of this scooter is that there's a screw here, and if you unscrew that, you can actually pop this cover off, and they've actually designed an Apple AirTag slot so you can pop your Apple AirTag in there and use Apple Find My to track your device. So, really nice feature. Here we've got our awesome nameplate, and as we work our way back, we do have this uh, hook for our folding latching mechanism back here. Now, if we work our way up to the handlebars, you will see that we do have some locking grips, which is really nice to see. Looks like you've also got some space for airflow here. Uh, we've also got our Zoom hydraulic brake levers, as well as a new control panel layout, which has got a power button, as well as the plus and minus buttons for switching between drive modes, as well as going in there and adjusting P settings. Another thing to mention about this scooter is this is going to be a little bit different. It's actually got a trigger throttle, whereas the previous Awesome Leopard and Awesome Gallop had thumb throttles. So we'll definitely be putting that to the test. As we work our way to the center here, we do have our screen. Uh, now, one thing to call out about this scooter is when you power it on, you're actually going to need to use an NFC card to unlock the scooter, which is a nice additional security feature so that somebody doesn't you know, run off with your scooter and try and scoot away from you. They'll need to have this NFC card, which it comes with three. If you are curious what kind of information you've got on this screen, it does give you your voltage, your trip meter, your odometer. Uh, it'll tell you what drive mode you're in. So it's got multiple, you've got park mode, you've got eco mode, you've got sport mode, as well as race mode. And then of course here on the right hand side, uh, we've got our speedometer and then you've got as well a battery readout here at the bottom. And when you hit the power button on this scooter, it'll toggle through the thing. So there's our odometer, there's our trip meter, there's our voltage. Uh, and all that fun stuff. So basically all the important information that you need is displayed on the screen. Uh, working our way over, we do have a newly designed control pad. We have our dual motor and single motor uh, button there, so you can switch that to toggle between single and dual motor modes. We've also got a joystick style control for our turn signals. And uh, when you turn those here, uh, as you can see, we've got our turn signals in action. So you've got them on the sides in the rear as well as the sides in the front. And of course, they're on both sides of the scooter. Uh, we've also got a horn here. We'll see how that sounds like. Very quiet. That is actually surprisingly quiet. The horns on the previous versions of this scooter were very loud. So this... I don't know. I don't know if that's adjustable or not, but we'll definitely go into the P settings later and find out. Uh, here's the other zoom brake lever uh, as well as the other locking grip. All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to get geared up so we can take this out on our first impressions ride. And then, of course, I will be following up all of this content with, you know, official hill climb tests, acceleration, speed tests. We'll do range tests, the whole nine yards, and we'll bring it all together in a future end to end review. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and take this out on its first ride. All right, folks, so we are out here on the Awesome Leopard DT1 Pro on our first impressions ride. Right now, I am cruising around in sport mode. One thing I'm going to tell you right now is out of the box, the acceleration settings are set to maximum. So my recommendation is to go into the P settings and adjust those accordingly because at level five, the acceleration is very intense. So I highly recommend dialing it down. For me, I found the most comfortable mode to be level two. Right now we're cruising around at 35 miles an hour and uh, this thing gets up to speed really quickly. Now we will be doing our official uh, speed and acceleration test when we get back to the Phoenix area uh, so that we can test this thing out on flat ground because there are a lot of hills here and I definitely want to make sure that we properly benchmark this scooter against both the previous Gallop and the Awesome Leopard. All right, so first things first is a little bit of a hill climb test. This is an extremely steep grade. I'm going to come back here and officially measure it so you have an idea of what we're going up right now. But it's a lot. It's got to be at least 20% grade, but uh, we'll definitely find out. But with these dual motors, it's able to make it up no problem at all whatsoever. And like I mentioned before, we are in sport mode right now. We also have race mode available to us if we need it. But right now, 28 miles an hour in sport mode, coming up a steep hill. All right, that was a little test of our shocks there. Do a pretty decent job of absorbing impact. 
so far this scooter handles very well. Let's go ahead and see how the brakes perform here. Oh yeah, lots of braking power. Another nice thing about this scooter is you can adjust the electronic or regenerative braking in the P settings to whatever level you want, you know, from one to five, five being the strongest, one being the weakest. One thing I will say is that the suspension isn't as plush as the uh, original Gallop, but it's still doing a good job of absorbing impact. Heading back down the hill. Test these brakes out. So far, so good. We'll have more opportunity to do that right up here. We're cruising around 32 miles an hour. Haven't even attempted to go faster than that yet. Like I said, we still have race mode available to us. All right, coming down the hill. Brakes are smooth and solid. Handles well coming into these curves. Go ahead and use our turn signal here. All right. Now it looks like sport mode pretty much can take you up to the top speed of this scooter. I think race mode is basically gonna be sport mode on steroids with, you know, additional acceleration power. But so far, this throttle response is very smooth. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this is my first uh, scooter with a trigger throttle. And so far, I am really liking it. All right, coming into this curve here, handles beautifully. Now, if you do hear some whistling in the video, my apologies. It is uh, my helmet here. It's got all kinds of vents on it. I absolutely love this helmet. It's just uh, at high speeds, you know, it picks up some whistling on the microphone. All right, here's another little hill for us to test out. And <laughs> this thing goes up no problem. So one thing I'm gonna tell you right now is Awesome says that this scooter will scale inclines up to 46% which is absolutely insane. So we'll definitely be putting that to the test. Got some squirrels here running across the road. See where this takes us. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but we do have some storm clouds building there and they are slowly rolling in. We got all kinds of thunder and lightning last night. All right, so we are going uphill in sport mode and we're still able to maintain 34 miles an hour. Here's a steeper section, full throttle in sport mode, 31 miles an hour. So this thing is absolutely a hill crusher. I'll tell you that right now. Will it do 46% inclines? I don't know. I don't have a, a grade steep enough to test that out on, but here's a steep section right here, cruising around 20 miles an hour. All right, so we're heading back down the mountain. So give us uh, ample opportunity to test out the hydraulic brakes. And they are doing very well. So when you get this scooter out of the box, you just want to make sure that the discs aren't rubbing at all. It's just uh, a quick loosening up of two hex screws and making sure that that rotor is aligned exactly in the center of those pads with a little bit of a gap on both sides. All right. One thing I will say about the suspension on this scooter, it is very bouncy. It's not as plush as like the awesome Gallop or even the awesome Leopard, but it definitely has a lot of travel and does a pretty good job of absorbing a lot of the impacts. Like right there, we went over a little bit of a pothole and uh, you know, it absorbs it really well. So anyways, so far, this is a very fun scooter to cruise around on. Very stable at speed. You know, so far it looks like we hit about 37 miles an hour. Uh, of course, I'm not attempting a top speed run, 
This is literally our first ride, so I want to, you know, cruise around on this, make sure everything is nice and tight before we do stuff like that. But so far, I was able to hit 37 miles an hour without issue uh, and no kind of speed wobbles or anything like that. It's actually very solid. All right, if we bump it up into race mode, that's going to crank up the acceleration on the scooter, and you can definitely feel a difference here coming into this turn. All right. On the display, I'm showing 40 miles an hour. We'll uh, confirm that with GPS, 41 miles an hour, 42 miles an hour, 43 miles an hour. No issue at all. So we'll, uh, we'll confirm that on GPS. But one thing I do want to mention is that the uh, handling is rock solid. As you can see there, there was no speed wobble or anything. It was absolutely dialed in. And uh, that's one thing about these scooters. You know, sometimes the high speed scooters, you go really quick and you get speed wobbles and things like that, which is a terrifying experience if you've never experienced that before. Even if you have experienced it before, it's still a terrifying experience. So I'm glad to see that even at high speeds, this thing handles very well. Here's another super steep incline. We're gonna be climbing right up the mountain now, still able to maintain 26 miles an hour. All right, we made it up that. No problem at all. That is steep. Uh, that's probably gonna be in the vicinity of you know 23 to 26 percent grade we'll have to test it out it is incredibly steep i know when i uh, came up here with my wife and daughter in the car yesterday we were like oh my gosh <laughs> this is a steep hill uh definitely steeper than anything we've got in the phoenix metro area that's for sure we'll go ahead and take this to the end of the street it does say we're going to be getting some rain here in a few minutes this scooter does have an ip54 rating uh, which means, you know, it could withstand some splashes. You know, I did take the Awesome Gallop, which has the same rating out in some uh, light rainy conditions, never had an issue and rode it, you know, to this day without any problems. But uh, IP54, it's not the highest water resistance rating, uh, but it's pretty common uh, with a lot of scooters out there. So anyways, if we get some rain, maybe we'll have the opportunity to test that out as long as there's no uh, thunder and lightning. So one thing I did notice is that when you do stop this a scooter for, you know, a minute or so, it does put it back into park mode. So just uh, be aware of that. You know, if you start uh, moving again and you realize the motor's not kicking in, it's probably in park mode. So just put it back into your desired speed mode and you're good to go. Now on a scooter like this, you're definitely gonna wanna fully leverage that kick plate, especially when accelerating from a stop because you can definitely feel it come through your body. Uh, but anyways, I really like the kick plate on this scooter because the angle in which it's positioned uh, is very, very comfortable. Sometimes kick plates come in at extreme angles, which just, just aren't comfortable for longer rides. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hook a ride up here. Coast is clear. We are in race mode once again, heading uphill. And as I mentioned, this thing has rock solid stability. Very good handling. And we're going about 40, 41 miles an hour right now, up a slight incline. All right, coast is clear behind us. Very smooth riding scooter. All right, so now we're heading up another steep hill. Not a problem for the awesome Leopard DT1 Pro. It <laughs> makes it up very easily. We are now heading into another really steep section. Slowing down a little bit, 30 miles an hour. Heading uphill. 
I definitely want to see how this thing performs at uh, South Mountain. I think this thing will tear that place up. All right, steepest section here. 20 miles an hour. No problem at all. All right, folks, so there you have it. That was our first impressions ride with the awesome Leopard DT1 Pro. And all I can say is I am very impressed with this scooter. Definitely did a very good job at handling at higher speeds. GPS did show us at about 38 miles an hour. Of course, when we get back to the Phoenix Valley, we'll be testing speed and acceleration out officially with the draggy GPS performance monitor. But I couldn't be more happy with the handling on this scooter, uh, even at higher speeds speeds going into curves, hitting bumps, we were easily able to maintain control with absolutely zero speed wobbles, which is one of the most important factors for me. Uh, in terms of the suspension, it is bouncy and it's a little on the stiff side for smaller bumps, but it definitely helps absorb uh, some of those bigger impacts. So very nice to have a full suspension on this scooter. Uh, later on, as we go through our testing regimen, we'll definitely see how this does off the beaten path. The throttle response on this scooter is very smooth. Uh, probably one of the smoothest throttles I've tested on a performance scooter like this. It was able to take us up to speed with very good granularity. So very impressed with that. Uh, the brakes are also solid. So really nice to see hydraulic brakes on the new version of this Leopard because they definitely help slow us down, especially you know coming down 25, 26% inclines. Uh, no issue at all whatsoever for the brakes on this scooter. Now, one thing that I'm not a huge fan of on this scooter is that kickstand. As you can see, it's in a pretty vertical position. So every time I park this scooter, I have to make sure that it's leaning over just enough so it doesn't tip over. So just use some caution when you're parking this thing on any kind of inclines. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much adjustability on there. I'll see if maybe things can be bent out a little bit, but uh, just something to keep in mind. Now, if you are interested in purchasing this scooter, of course, I am going to be doing a full end-to-end -end review. But in the meantime, if you're interested in it, I will include a link in the description below, as well as a coupon code, which will help bring down that price. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns. Happy to address them in the comments section below. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.